This Jeep is going to be a beast when we're done with it. A supercharger, long arm suspension, new exhaust, and a mean front bumper. This beast is about to be unleashed today on Truck U. So today, we're gonna take this cute, little, unassuming looking Jeep, and I don't mean cute in a bad way, because it's a nice looking truck, but we're gonna make it into a beast, right? Now, the cool thing is, when you're working with a Jeep like this in the aftermarket, man, there's a million different directions we can go. The direction we're gonna go today is one that he is gonna be very, very happy with. I think you're really gonna like what we're doing with this, right, B? Yeah, I think the time has come. We made one of these perform. Right. You know, I think everybody knows that these Jeeps don't come with a lot of power. It's kind of like a normal deal with them. You know, it's sure. a 3.8 liter V6, and you step on the gas, and it's like <coughs> nothing <Yeah>. happens. <laughs> well, we're going to change all that today. We're going to put a supercharger on this thing. So going from a base of 130 horsepower, we're going to almost double it. We add a little over 100 horsepower to this thing, which will really bring it alive. You know, you know, step on the gas, you can have some fun out on the trails. I mean, I think my buddy Rob was driving this thing before. We tried turning the wheels in dirt, and it didn't work. Right, right. That's not good. So the bigger tire we have on, we're going to have a lot more fun, but there's a lot of work that's got to get done. First thing we got to do is we got to get the grill off, because we're putting a new intercooler in. Then we're going to start tearing the engine apart, because we got new injectors. We got the supercharger, we got suspension, we got all kinds of stuff going on today, man. We got to get to work. We got a big receipt is what we've got, <laughs> but this is cool. You know, you think about it percentage-wise, man, with a 100 horsepower gain, that's huge. Yeah, huge. The supercharger we're installing today is from Rip Mods. Now, Rip Mods has been in business for quite a while, and they're a very well-known name, especially in the Jeep world. They got a lot more well-known, interestingly enough, when Jeep started putting this 3.8 in there, because so many people were disappointed about the performance they were getting or not getting from this particular engine. So Rip Mods says, hey, look, we've got a solution to that. We're going to offer you V8 power for a fraction of the cost of making this a V8. Now, a lot of guys, to get that V8 power, what they're doing is dropping in the Hemi, and I get it. They're keeping with that whole Chrysler badging. The downside is, first of all, the Hemi is a whole lot bigger. It's about another cylinder up front. As you can see, there isn't a lot of room in the engine bay as it is. The biggest setback was the cost. You're looking at about $25,000 to do so. There's a lot of modifications, and you know what? You're adding an extra 100 pounds over that front axle. So the smart way to do, as far as I'm concerned, is to add a power adder like we're doing for rip mods. You're going to get the same power. You're going to do it at a fraction of the cost, and believe it or not, it's actually going to save you money over the course of time. And this is how you sell it at home, guys. You tell your wife that, believe it or not, with this supercharger on it, you're going to save in fuel economy if you drive it casually. Now, you and I both know that you're never going to drive this thing casually. Wow. But if the wife does, essentially, you could save yourself enough money over the course of the vehicle that will pay for itself. Yeah, if you guys have a joint account or she sees all the receipts or something, you know, you got to have a good sales pitch for that thing. I think that's a job well done. You, like you say, honey, we can't afford not to do this. Right? Exactly. The only downside to this modification is it doesn't install itself, no. so that's where we come into play. Yeah, we so what that. we got to do is we had to drain off a little bit, they say about a gallon or so of coolant, so this way when you take off this coolant line and reroute it for the supercharger, that you don't spill all over the ground. The other thing is you got a bunch of sensors we have to get out of the way. We got TPS, the map sensor, then we have to take the top of the plenum off. The idea here is get the top of the plenum off, we can change the injectors. Bigger injectors come with the kit. Everything you see we're going to do today comes with the kit. The bigger injectors will feed more fuel, compensate for that more air, and that's where we're going to get that extra 100 horsepower. Pretty neat deal. All right. well, that came off easy. Got that. Get these injectors out. So the plenum is off, the fuel rail is out, now we can start swapping out those injectors. Now something you notice right away is we put a little masking tape across the intake manifold this way, make sure we don't drop anything down inside the engine, cause ourselves a lot of issues, and also keep dirt and debris out from the engine. It takes about a minute, can save you a lot of time and hassle over the long run. Now when we take off the old injectors, a lot of times you can do it by hand or sometimes you need to get a screwdriver to pop these little clips off, but they come out pretty easily once you get the clip off. Uh, this one's been in a little while, a little seized, but the whole idea is we need to get more fuel in the engine to make more power. More air from this supercharger is going to allow us to add more fuel to make more power, 
but the restriction is these old injectors. So by putting in a new set of bigger injectors that we're getting from the kit from Rip Mods, we'll be able to do that. Now, one thing with a new set of injectors or any injectors, you gotta keep in mind there's a very small little orifice, or actually there's four little orifices here where the fuel spray comes out, and that's how it gets atomized and you have a nice fine mist. The problem is with such a small opening like this, a little bit of debris, a little bit of dirt can cause you to have issues with the engine. So be careful you don't do this in a dirty environment, you don't get anything over those screens. Also, you want to keep in mind is the fact you've got these O-rings on the top and bottom. You want to lubricate them with just some oil or grease to make sure that they not only go in easily, but they seal well. So once we get all these injectors swapped out, what we'll do is we'll put the fuel rail back into place. Once we get the fuel rail back into place, we'll put the plenum back on, tie up this part, and then we can start installing our supercharger. Welcome back to Truck U. So we're working on the supercharger kit from Rip Mods and we're getting some things out of the way so that we can slide all these pieces and parts down in there, that's good. One of the things we need to get out of the way is this water pump pulley right here. So what we did was just tighten it down with the belt a little bit, that way it doesn't spin when we're loosening up these bolts. Okay. We can get those up out of the way. I got them all broken. All right, then we can get that pulley out of there and then loosen up the belt and get all that stuff out of the way, right? Now, when we were on a break, we went ahead and put in this PCV valve. Now, this is the positive crankcase ventilation valve. And what that really means is it's a check valve in the way so you don't positively pressurize the crankcase. Now, here's what I mean. Naturally aspirated engine pulls a vacuum and it sucks the piston down. When you put a blower or a supercharger on it, what it's gonna wanna do is actually pressurize the crankcase, which is not a good thing. So this one-way valve will let the air flow this direction, but not back the other. A little thing we slipped in during our break, but something I want to point out to you guys, because it's important when you start using a supercharger on an engine. Got it. Handle that. Mm-hmm. You see, you like what I did for you here? That was nice. There we go. Man, that supercharger looks awesome, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks real good. I mean, it just looks powerful. Now, if you look at the front side, you see the compressor housing, you might think, wow, that's a turbocharger. It's not, it looks the same and it has the same function as a turbo, just the way it goes about is a little bit differently. Now, with a centrifugal supercharger like this, you'll see that it's driven off a belt which is tied to the crankshaft. We've got that big serpentine belt going all the way around. That's one of the advantage over a turbocharger is it's got instant throttle response. You hit the throttle, spins up, you've got boost immediately. Now, you talk about a turbocharger though, it's a little bit differently. It's free spinning, it doesn't rob any power, but you've got a lag when you hit the throttle. So with this supercharger, there's no lag and we are gonna have instantly close to 100 horsepower if we want it. Now, either way you go, a supercharger versus a turbocharger, the idea is to cram as much cold air in there as possible. Now, you've gotta do that somehow because you're not just gonna get all of it right there and then shoot it right in. It's gonna shoot it down here through this intercooler that we're dropping in right here. That wraps back around and then that goes into the intake. So that's going in there, cooling off and going back into the intake. That's the the name of the game. Now, a couple of minutes ago when we came down here, there's a little template that comes in the kit and there's some holes right here that's lined up from the factory and it's real easy. You cut the template out, you line them up with the holes, made our mark, that told us what we needed to cut away. So we ground away a little bit of that plastic, make room for this piping, that way we can sneak that in there, tighten it all up, and then the system will be in place and then we can tighten it all down. Now again, this is the Gen 2 Stage 2 Supercharger Kit from the guys at Rip Mods, and it comes with everything that we need. So we have those newer and bigger injectors, those went in first. We had the new spark plugs, those went in. Now you've also got the new programmer that comes with it. It's part of the kit, it's all included, this Diablo Sport, and that way everything's gonna communicate. Yeah, this is the final piece of the puzzle. It's the Diablo Sport tuner that, like Matt said, comes with the kit and it's gonna allow us to download a specific calibration for this Jeep. With this, we're gonna be able to make sure all this works right and we're gonna get all the proper horsepower out of it. And you've got all different calibrations, all different tuning windows you can do with this tuner. A nice piece of the puzzle. And you know what? It's gonna make this thing really happy. A couple more things to tighten up and this baby's done, man. That'll be cool. All right, we're gonna get this thing up on the lift then we can start working on the suspension. This is the X-Factor three-link long arm kit from Rockcrawler Suspensions. Now, we've worked with these guys a lot in the past, and we love Rockcrawler Suspension because it is what we refer to as monster truck stuff. And when I say that, I mean it's big. It's two inches all the way around. This stuff is heavy. This bar alone probably weighs close to 40 pounds. I mean, this stuff will hold up. 
Now this Jeep's already got a very good rock crawler system on it, but here's the deal. The driver has grown. His needs have changed because he's gotten to be a lot better driver. So the obstacles that used to be big and used to be extreme aren't as big or extreme. He's going for bigger stuff. Well, he needs products that are going to grow with him, and that's what this suspension system from rock crawler is going to do. Now for those of you guys that aren't suspension gurus, I'm going to give you about a 15 second tour of what a four link suspension does back here. This is four link because you got one, two, and then three and four on the other side. So the lower bar right here keeps the axle in place and keeps it from doing this. The upper bar right here keeps the whole axle assembly from twisting right there on the pinion right there. Then you've got a track bar across the back and that holds the axle in place and keeps it from shifting to the right and left out like that. That's going to get replaced with all this. So basically we're going from one very good, very well functioning suspension system to another one that's just as good but has a little bit more travel. And again, it's all about using a rock crawler suspension system and really growing and changing with the needs of the driver. That's what we're trying to accomplish. Now this is only a 30 minute show, so we're not going to get this done today, but like I said, it's on the list of things to do. And when we come back, I'll give you know who a hand with that exhaust. How you doing back there? Got that. Good. Hey, welcome back to Truck U. Now, we spent a lot of time today working on this Jeep, trying to get it to perform a little bit better. Now, we put a new supercharger system on this thing from the guys at Rip Mods. It's going to give us another 100 horsepower. It comes complete with an intercooler kit. It's got new injectors. It's got a new tuner. Everything you need to get more air crammed into this engine, make a lot more power. But what we're going to try and do is make sure that we get all that air efficiently as possible out. Now, it's already got a set of headers on it, so that's cool but we're going to replace the factory exhaust system, the brand new one from Magnaflow. This is a great system from Magnaflow. It's all stainless steel. It's durable. It's all mandrel bent the way that it is right there. So there's no restriction. You just got great flow. It just comes right in and out. And take a look at the difference between these two right there, huh? Yeah, I mean, look at how big and cumbersome this was. This is definitely a restriction here. And just visually, it's an aesthetic look. And you know, you've got the polished stainless steel. It's going to stay looking good for a long period of time. You've got this nice looking stainless steel tip. That's going to be cool. Now we get a couple more pieces all hooked up in there. It just goes in nice and easy. We can mount everything up, get it together loose. Once we get the new Magnaflow exhaust in, we are almost ready to take this thing out off-roading, or let him do it rather, but there is something else we got to do real quick. Now when we get this Jeep back to our buddy, it's going to be set up to do some pretty serious off-roading, and that's going to be a lot of fun for him. You didn't like the spinning tire? It's a little much. Okay, whatever, no big deal. Now here's one of the inherent problems, is inevitably you're going to puncture a tire. You never know when it's coming, you don't know when it's going to happen, you don't know how it's going to happen, but there is something you can do to help prevent it from becoming a much bigger problem. Yeah, the way you do it is you go ahead and treat the tire with tire sealant from slime. Now this stuff is going to go ahead and coat the whole inside of your tire, so if you were to puncture it going down a road or going through a race, it'll seal it up right for you, you won't even know you had a problem. Let's take a look at this and see how it works. We drill a hole here Not, and we'll show you how this... No, 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 this, this is the display model oh, right here. Okay. Yeah, that might that be. That would have been ugly. Could have been, <laughs> could have been. So we've already gone ahead and pre-treated this tire so it's ready to rock. Yeah, what we did was we took out the Schrader valve, let all the air out of the tire, then we pumped in the appropriate amount of slime, put the Schrader valve back in, and stuck the air in the tire. So now it's ready to go. The nice thing is right on the back of the slime bottle right there, it tells you whichever kind of tire you're doing, how many ounces that you need, you pump in the right amount, you're ready to go. Now it's time to have some fun. Let's do it. So we're going to drill a hole in this tire and show you guys how the slime fixes the hole. You ready? Got it. Now, your tire is leaking and you've got a problem, but you're spinning, 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 spinning. and whoop, did you hear that? No more leak, boom. That's really cool. Now you don't have to just use it as a preventative, you can do it as a repair as well. So if you didn't have the foresight to go ahead and put this slime in your tire ahead of time, if you have an issue out on the road, you can go ahead and do it afterwards, fix the problem, inflate the tire, and you are good to go. Just for fun, let's say you hit that same thing about three more times. All right. What would happen hypothetically? Oh, another leak. Oh, hold on, one more shot. Oh, two more leaks. Give us one more. Oh. There's like big thick cactuses all over the place. I can hear them, my tire's leaking. Oh my goodness. Nice. Oh, oh, it just sealed up. Look at that. Boom. Slime. Tire's fixed. We're rolling down the road. We don't even know we have a flat. That is we really don't. cool. And another cool thing about slime is it's safe on all wheels and it will not corrode. And I think the best place forward is in the back of this Jeep. All right. Cool. Add that to his invoice. <laughs> Let's go inside the Duplicolor garage. Duplicolor. Yes, you can in your garage.
Today we are back out here at the ranch. I love this place. You look around, there's chickens and horses and kids and dogs running around. This is living. But now it's time to get back into the garage and do a little bit of work. Now here's the backstory on this Jeep, right? The guy took the back seats out. He doesn't even use them. That way, the bed is like a small pickup truck bed. He can haul stuff around and actually use it. What we're going to do today is offer some really good protection with this. It's the Dupacolor Bed Armor, the ultimate in truck bed protection. And it's the only do-it-yourself truck bed coating that's formulated with Kevlar so you know it's going to hold up. First thing we need to do is get this stuff out of here and clean the bed of this Jeep out. A wise man once said, knock the trim out first, and that's exactly what we're doing here this afternoon with this. It's the Bed Armor Aerosol in the can. This way, we can get into all the hard to reach places, around these loops and tie downs all over the place, and we can get to all the spots that the roller won't go. Once we get that knocked out, we can bring out the special roller. Now, this is specially designed to give us that textured finish that we want. Now, the Bed Armor is a water-based polyurethane, and that's good for a couple of different reasons. One, if you get somewhere you don't want it, it's an easy cleanup with soap and water. Two, it's a very low odor formula, so that's real nice when you're working with it. It also has a built-in UV inhibitor. It's like sunblock already in the product, so it's not going to fade out on you. It also won't chip, crack, or peel. This is going to last and protect the bed of your vehicle. And don't forget the aerosol can for the hard to reach places. It's a great thing to put into the bed of your truck and protect it and keep it like brand new. Now the deal is you can use it in a million and one different other places as well. Think about it. Any place you need a durable non-skid surface, the bed armor is going to get the job done for you. For more information about this or any other Duplicolor product, be sure to check out their website. Welcome back to Truck U. You know, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Our buddies in the power sports world and the boating world, they had a little edge on us for a while, and they weren't telling us about it, but right now the secret is out, and that secret is StarTron. Fuel treatment right there, okay? Now we can bring this into our world, the trucks, and we're not going to have any problems with ethanol anymore. Yeah, in the marine and power sports world, what happens is those, those vehicles say, sit for a while. The engines are sitting, the fuel gets diluted, the fuel systems get clogged up, and the StarTron brings them back to life. And what we're seeing now, the transfer to the automotive world with the StarTron, is the fact that our fuel is cut with ethanol by 10%. By cutting the fuel with the ethanol, you're essentially diluting it, you're taking away power, you're taking away fuel economy. Put the StarTron in, the enzymes in the StarTron are like little Pac-Man to go ahead and break down that debris, break down that moisture and that clogging, and bring your engine back to life again. Yeah, boat guys, the secret's out, and that secret is StarTron, and we're going to get results that we can feel right away. By now, pretty much everybody realizes a quick, easy way to get more performance out of your engine is to add a cold air intake. Like this, it's the MXP series from Air Raid. Now, with this Air Raid system, you're going to get a whopping 1100 CFM flowing through this thing, either in their oiled or non oiled configuration. Now, little things also make a difference with this, like the double hump hose end right here, maximum flexibility not only during installation, but extreme conditions out on the trails. You've also got the lid on the box, the fender inlet. Now, keep in mind, this is a display lid, so your lid, when you buy it, isn't going to look like this, but that allows us to see the filter in there that Bruno's talking about. Pretty cool. And you can use this with aftermarket snorkels too. So pretty much whatever you want to do. It's the MXP series cold air intake from Air Raid. This one is for the 2012 Jeep Wranglers. Recently, one of our little projects was a 1985 Chevrolet C10. We got all the pieces and all the parts that we needed for that project from guys at Brothers Truck Parts. Now, they are the number one source for any and all things Chevy and GMC truck related from 1947 up to 1987. Now, what we've got here is a front bumper for a 1983 to 1987 Chevy truck. It's one of the thousands of parts you can get from Brothers, whether you call their 1-800 number, go online, or get one of their free catalogs. Flip through the inside, you're going to find little doorknobs and handles or a big bumper like this, just about anything you need, and you're going to get it quick because these guys are located in the central part of the USA, so shipping's going to come really quick and get the parts you need and get on to work with your project. These guys eat, sleep, and breathe Chevy trucks. So like we said, if you're doing any kind of Chevy truck restoration project from 47 to 87, Brothers Truck Parts are the guys that are going to hook you up. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. What do you think, bud? I think it sounds good. Yeah. A sounds lot, a little different. A lot better. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. You know what's neat about that? It sounds aggressive right there, right? And then if you look into the engine compartment, it looks aggressive. 
especially when you look at that. Yeah. And now, once I get this all bolted up from the front all the way down the sides, we're going to keep that aggressive look going with a whole host of products that we got from JCR Off Road. This is the Dagger Series Pre Runner Winch Bumper. Cool thing about it is when you buy a bumper like this, it comes like that, bare metal. Now, personally, I like that. I love that look right there. I'd probably leave it just like that. But in the interest of this particular vehicle and the color matching, we went ahead and got this one powder coated black. No, I love the look of this thing. I'll be honest with you, what I love even more is the fact these guys are based in Kalamazoo, Michigan. They do all their machining in house, which means it's made right here in the United States. And to me, they get mad love for that. Yeah, that's a big deal, man. This is all 316 inch steel. Good and strong. And take a look at this. When it's in place, you got good approach angles. You've got a lot of clearance. Everything is good. Everything is beefed up. And this lower skid plate's going to go right here, too. So that's going to offer more protection on the front. But it doesn't end there because the protection goes all the way down the side. And that goes with these rock sliders right here, also from JCR. So these will bolt up right in there. They'll kind of hug the door a little bit. All this protection on the lower part of the body and down the side. That way you can get a little bit crazy in this thing if you want to. <laughs> now, the last piece of the puzzle for us is we're going to swap out the stock header bolts with some new ones. These are locking fasteners from Stage 8. Now the whole idea here is header bolts are no notorious for backing off and loosening up. And when that happens, you get a, a leak of exhaust gases, which is not what you want. So we're going to fix that and we're going to fix it one time by doing it the right way with Stage 8 locking fasteners. So these bolts will go in the same way as your normal header bolts, but here's where it gets cool. They've got these locking mechanisms that keep them torqued down. So you've got these little clips. They'll slip over the head of the bolt like that. And the way you position it is, let's say my finger is a tube, a back side of it, so it can't unturn, it can't come out. Then you keep it in place with this little locking clip, and there you go. You know your fastener is going to stay in place. Just by looking at it, you can tell you've got the right torque spec because it physically can't come off. And what's great about it too is you pop these off, you can loosen it up and tighten it back again. They're completely reusable. There's a lot going on in that little fastener, I'm not going to lie to you, but here's the deal. Guys that need precision and guys that need stuff to stay where it's at, that's what they're using. All right, so we're talking about people in the aerospace industry, NASA, the military vehicles. Those guys don't want any surprises, right? And that's why they're using that. You know, what's great too is because the bolts are made from grade 8 material. They've got a duplex nickel finish on them, and they've got this nice little head on it on the inside where you can use a 3 16 Allen, so those tight spots, you can spin it into place and then torque it down from the outside. So I'm going to continue swapping out these factory head bolts with these brand new Stage 8 locking fasteners. You know what's cool is these guys have a locking fastener for just about anything you can imagine. If you can think of it, they can lock it down, buddy. Yep, absolutely. All right, so you're going to finish that up? Yep. Cool. Job well done. That's all the time we've got this week. We'll catch you guys next time around. What are you doing up there anyways? You know, why are you treating you? Oh, you're doing the normal. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs>